while we're under the car, I'm going to turn you around uh, from our gas tank position and let's talk about where the spare tire was. Um, this comes down, we've actually got quite a bit of room behind here. It's uh, rear of the wheels. This is uh, where our rear suspension is. But I think we can build a box here about 35 inches wide this way and 21 inches deep this way. Again, about 11 inches deep that we can hang inside that cargo area, actually under the floor of the cargo area, and have enough room for an additional seven batteries and, um, and perhaps a Brusa charger. Um, and it would be nice to get all that below the floor of the cargo area for an additional seven batteries um, and a Brusa charger. Um, with the six batteries uh, where the tanks were, and the seven, that's 13 batteries total. I'm gonna need 12 more batteries to get our 25 battery to have a, uh, a 100 cell system. Um, and we're gonna do that with a tray that sits um, over the back seat area. And that should give us quite a bit more cargo room than the S model uh, Mini E has. Uh, in the back, we'll retain our full cargo area. We're really just losing the spare and the tool kit and that little hidden area underneath and um, and the back seat. And uh, even then, by using these uh, gas tank areas, um, we should just have to go one level above the um, uh, back seat uh, seat level. And so that'll make a second shelf uh, it won't be a totally flat cargo area, but a second shelf that's down considerably lower than what they did with the Mini E and give us uh, some more room for coats and jackets and uh, dry cleaning or whatever uh, cargo in that, in that space. And so, but this back here, I think if we cut this out, we'll have room for about a 35, 36 inch wide by 21 inch box here. And that's one of the next things we're going to do is uh, start cutting um, battery boxes. All right, that takes us to our uh, um, gas door. The Mini Cooper Clubman, unlike most of the earlier Minis, which had a cap here, actually has a fuel door, which I like. It uh, flips open and closed. This gives us an opportunity maybe to put a little micro switch in here to do some interlocking on our charge process. The existing, if you will notice what we've got here now, is our um, Marinco um, three prong, uh, 120 volt AC plug. As you know, I like these little plugs. They're, they're pretty stout and can handle additional current. The, uh, of course, the NEMA code um, strictly limits these to 20 amps, um, 120 volts AC, and we routinely put 240 volts AC at um, as much as 30 amps into the car. Our, uh, we ran into a little bit of luck here. Our uh, gas filler nozzle is in here just with a little tab that holds it in place. Um, has our um, um, Marinco uh, AC was almost a perfect match. There's a little bit of metal material around each side of the filler cap that just kept us out of there. Um, brain ground some off with a little Dremel tool to make it perfectly round and the Marinco actually threaded into what was left of the uh, fuel filler um, almost perfectly. You put a little uh, well, actually a pretty big nut down in there to hold it on, and that's our, uh, our Marinco connector uh, fitted to our um, gas filler cap, which is held on by a little bracket um, inside of there. So this is a pretty easy uh, to engineer solution here. And that works right with our door. Uh, ultimately, this is probably not what we're gonna have. Um, the, uh, 
Uh, SAE is a standards body that adopts uh, standards primarily for uh, the U.S. Uh, for a variety of things. That's where your SAE size wrenches and sockets come from as opposed to metric. Um, right now they're reviewing uh, a proposal for a charging connector, which would be the first standardized connector that we've had for electric cars. Uh, the connector itself it was prototyped by Yazaki. We've talked to them recently. They've run into a little bit of roadblock and are having to do some re-engineering on it. But that basic five pin plug is uh, what's being proposed and is under consideration kind of on a fast track at SAE for a standardized AC charging receptacle for electric cars. Um, if um, we can get those before this project's done, uh, we're going to replace some Renco with one of those, um, simply so our car will be standardized with a standard connector. San Francisco and Portland uh, announced this week a uh, war between the cities to see who can put in the most charging stations and have their city completely covered with charging stations first. Well, naturally, we applaud this. My question is, without a standardized charging plug, how do charging stations make any sense? They put in five charging stations here in Cape Girada at the new federal courthouse with a connector that no one in the area can use to charge anything. <laughs> and, so, and so it's not a big issue. And uh, in the past, uh, when we're out, we just plug into a 120 volt AC standard 20 amp outlet. And we'll continue to do that in the event that we do get a J1772 um, SAE plug in time to finish this project and put it on the car. We'll simply make an adapter cable that'll have a J1772 male on one end and our Marinco. Uh, female on the other, it's where we can still plug into 120 volt AC.